No better time than the present slash marker reaction start. We'll hit it and we'll set it. So the score esports is probably one of, one of the most mainstream, larger esports focused YouTube channels out there, right? They do content on a various topics regarding, you know, esports, different games, influencers, content creators, various topics of various kinds, right? And, you know, they've received both praise and criticism, I think. Obviously, the subscriber count is, you know, relatively, it speaks for itself that the content that they produce does have some appeal to people, especially people who want to watch, you know, as we get this thing up here, some more broadly delivered content. The now that I've, I've actually got the, um, Interaction stuff up here as well. The chat can actually show up on the screen. I've got it at the top. Hey there. Oh no, it's the scam bot. Oh, that's a great start. Anyway, listen. This is the eternal battle of being tweeting with your Twitch. All right, <laughs> well, word sad. Love that. But you know, if we're if we're gonna. Don't load every video. I'm only reacting to the one that I'm in. Not, to, I don't want to listen. Fair use, free, fair use is broadly applicable. React streamers and stuff is fairly big, you know. That's a, a secondary situation. I'm just here to talk about what I have actually contributed to in some way. So I think it's, you know, very transformative for me to give my opinion and my take on this. And this video reaction is going to be much longer than 15 minutes, of course, right? Because I've got my actual raw audio file of what I said in the interview. I don't have the interviewer, but I have my responses and I think that's fair game, right? But you know what? Like, this, this is the kind of video that they do. Some like, like, as you can see, they get like views here or there, random gaming stuff. They called it the leader in competitive gaming coverage, of course, you know. Oh, God damn it. I will not be listening to goddamn chemist warehouse advertisement i do not care just just show me the damn thank you um please watch my ads <laughs> anyway oh don't i don't care let's be honest but i participated in an interview and i've actually you know what i've actually i've actually got it up here i've actually got it up here cs2 the death of the flashbang i'm not gonna go over this if you want to see a video talking about that i did one a while back talking about how reddit received that article and the ins and outs and ups and downs therein but this time they did a little bit of a feature now i was reached out to by one of the um writers of the score esports now i believe they are credited down here i believe yes Written by Josh Berry at Throngolu. So I was reached out to by this person to do a video. They said they saw the article on Reddit. They saw the um, video that I did about it. And they wanted to kind of touch up on it, see, make a video on it, put it in the pipeline for the YouTube channel. I said, you know what? You don't get this kind of chance to capitalize on that sort of thing. It doesn't happen every day, right? And so I decided, you know what, let's just jump into it, you know, start the interview. Now, let me just pull up my own audio at the same time so that, well, not at the same time, but kind of in parallel. Yeah. Okay. That's really quiet. Mm. Yeah. I was checking the times are different, times are different, you know, so I just call them, you know. Particularly, like, not. I don't have a full. It's my voice job from outside of this. It's actually, and the first part of my article before I get into the meat. There's a lot of. There's like forty minutes of like. Well, half of it is cut off, and half of it is me. You know, talking. So I'm not gonna show the entire transcript. I think that would be kind of pointless. But you know what? Let's get into the video itself. 
It was created in... The flashbang is a okay, cool that's... part of Capcom. We don't need it to be so loud, means... right? Now, number one thing that I would like to mention, right? Because I think it's important to note that the writer here is the person who interviewed me. The host hosts multiple people. I did not speak with them and I had no input basically at all into the actual video. All I did was answer questions in an interview and give my, you know, opinion, explanation and subsequent, you know, words therein, right? So one of the things that this video does, and I understand why it's done, because there's a whole process of, you know, social media engagement or whatever, right? And they're not just producing long form content and producing necessarily passion driven content. They're producing kind of a blend of stuff that makes it doable and promotable for mainstream audiences. And as such, you kind of sacrifice some of the, you know, smaller details and maybe a bit of spirit and soul. Is my opinion, right? The AC is too damn cold in this room. Anyway, but no, I'm not gonna cut any of this. I could edit this down, but I think there's some value to just having an unfiltered train of thought here and there, right? And so what the video kind of seems like at times is where it seems like I'm responding to questions that the host is asking me. I don't know it was written by the same writer, but the, some of the words, you know, I feel like aren't exactly represented the way I said it, right? So let's just get it's into it. Truly incredible place. Oh my you know, God. now they, they obviously, you know, inters intersperse some clips, some here, some there to keep things entertaining. That's kind of but none of my strike two changed a lot business of necessarily. If you want to watch the original video and you don't want to hear me talking over it, then you shouldn't have come here in the first place. I'm sure you're here because you're genuinely interested are better than ever but flashbangs could be having a sort of identity crisis. now i can't i can't take fault at the title because i called my article death of the flashbang clickbait Fewer means flashbangs clickbait flashbangs are being thrown than just a couple of months ago and we found a guy with the numbers found a guy that's me listen i mean i was they got they got courtesy of me sub and my sub stack is here and listen step step one they changed the full screen of youtube so you can actually scroll which is kind of nice not gonna lie um I requested, and you could say on some level that this is, you know, greedy of me to request more credit, but of course, you know, I'm requesting all the credit I can. If you're, if you're coming to me for a video about my article, I'm requesting all the credit I can. Big thanks. Now, Mahone is also in this video. If you know Mahone, he's, you know, done analyst work for NIP. He's done broadcast work, quote unquote, weatherman work, whatever that ended up meaning, but he did like deep dives on specific strats and executes on like Skybox, for example, for Blast, and I think for PGL at some point as well, if I remember correctly, maybe, maybe not. You know, but he, he, there's no question, he knows what he's talking about. You've probably seen his YouTube videos talking about deep dives in CS through the years, and I'm credited here with my, my sub stack, right? And, you know, I obviously would have, I requested like, you know, my Twitter, my YouTube, my Twitch, and my Substack all be linked in the description because if you're gonna interview me for something, it's my assumption that you should promote me. I'm obviously not gonna end up at the top. That's a sacrifice that is, you know, at the end of the day, unconsequential. But I personally, you know, I'm not entirely satisfied with the level of that here. Like, it's okay at best. They could they could have given my actual links, my time and insight, like, you know. If you're going to title the video after something that I talked about and then the majority of the video is just like other random stuff, like, you know, my input has been reduced a little bit, but that's neither here nor there. Well, let's continue. Prove it. So why are pros using flashbangs less? And what does it spell for the future? Sure, of yes, of course. Made? I yes. think there's a lot of, there's a lot of... My own voice, here we go. Now, now is the, now is this part where... You know, I wish I, if I had planned this a bit better, I could have scrolled through my entire interview and, you know, I'll go through the more interesting questions after we go through this entire video and then I can focus on that specifically, right?
a lot of uh, feeling being done with CS2 right now because a lot of the analysis hasn't really been done yet. You know, we've had 10 years of people doing like deep analysis of like obscure stuff, running test workshop maps. And for a long time, we haven't had those kind of tools to test the same kind of functionality. Here we go. That's me. No, and I was just kind of, you know, in, in, res in response to, you know, what's been going on, why, you know, how this kind of statistical analysis comes to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Listen, you know, you know, I, I did the interview, you're not getting free merch promo from me. Okay, watch, you can watch the original video for that. I, I contributed enough as it is. If I, if I if I was just if I'm not doing a regular React streamer take here, okay? It's in 1.0, and even in the good old days of 1.6, players were finding ways to use and abuse their power. I don't know what this guy would know about 1.6, but I don't know either, so I can't speak on it. Flashes became more and more coordinated. Where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, they're quick. Properly timed flashes can catch an enemy off guard and buy you an important split second advantage. I mean, this like. You can tell that they're explaining stuff to people who don't know a thing when they explain why is a flashbang good? It's quick and effective and you can hold as he kind of continues. They're particularly important for and against oppers. You know, like if you didn't like, okay, let's be honest. If you didn't know that, then what is going on in your life, right? That's me. It's you, is it? I don't know. I didn't <laughs> miss it. Because you can carry multiple flashes, Hello, Sigim. Hello. have a little more flexibility than a smoke. One team of kitted out players can execute some crazy Who stuff. Who is this guy? Of course, listen, you can't... The state of CS when... There's... Somehow we've ended up with a damn betting sponsorship in the bottom left. We can't... <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Somehow, some way, we've ended up with that. Yeah. Anyway, Double move on. Who is this guy? Who was that guy? Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is this clip is of I mean, I don't need to explain this clip. This is like the this is the, probably the most famous Astralis clip, right? You know, the whole Molotov execute. You know? I think this did for Astralis what um the Alexi B micromanaging narrative did for Alexi B. <laughs> Everyone thought that Astralis was four Molotov side execute for a long time. In CSGO, utility usage evolved over time, driven by back No way, it did? And one of the uh, I'm not gonna make fun of this guy. Okay, Mahone, listen, this, I, I, I think this is what made the video take a bit longer. Now, for full clarity, let me get the specific date up. Right, I did the interview on the 9th of March, uh, March, January, to get the words right, 9th of January, and the video came out on the 3rd of February. So it basically took like a month, originally it was going to take I think less, but I think they were trying to figure out to get Mahone's time and words on the, you know, just to say a little quick thing. And honestly, that's very fair, because Mahone is... You know, as, mu as much as I would like to toot my own horn as much as possible when talking about my own stuff, Mahone definitely, you know, at the very least, he's more experienced and he's put more hours and knows more than me when it comes down to the minute details, right? So getting his opinion on utility Towers usage like can never go wrong. Mahone. Yeah, you know? so I'm Mahone. Uh, you may also know me by my YouTube channel, Mahone TV. You may have also seen me on Blast when I did the Mahone Zone. And even before that, I was an analyst for NIP. Mahone a lot of respect for Mahone. Video about the evolution of utility usage in Inferno's banana. And Go yet, watch that video if you haven't. Flashes. But we wanted to ask him about how flashbang usage developed over the course of CS:GO, because at the beginning they were. To use flashes effectively, you kind of have to be more precise about them. You kind of have to keep in mind all the cues, like whether the flash bounces, whether the flash can be heard, like when the player yeah, throws it. Obviously, yep. All these little Nuances. other things were not really considered back then, but they're much more considered now. But new lineups with flashes got deep to the point where dodging one by the end could be a harrowing experience. I think the interesting part about what CSGO has done with the flashbang is just kind of interesting. I think it's fair to have Mahone, Mahone be the one to give his input on things that happened in the past. You know, that's kind of been his his main, you know, I should say bread and butter in some ways. 
mechanics, especially when you're on a top team and you're playing against the team and you're prepping against them. You know, sometimes background information is always useful. It's something I, it's something I didn't go like through the years flashback because, like Mahon says, I think Mahon on Twitter says basically like doing a video like the one he did on nade usage in one specific area can take months to compile you need all the demos you need to record segments here and there you need to crunch the data as well and then you need a voice over and you need to edit it it can it takes months for a video that has you know honestly a niche appeal on some level so There's like various levels to this entire thing, but he's definitely one of the ones who puts all the effort into it and should be rewarded as a, as a result. Well, that's I mean, listen, that's true, and that's why you know, on some level, I don't mind that they do a video like this because it does kind of it's a, it at least offers a window into people delving in because, like. Years ago, when I first... Uh, hello, Kumala, by the way. Hello. Years ago, when I didn't know things, I didn't watch, you know, Richard Lewis, Thorin. I didn't watch Deep Dive. I didn't study demos. I didn't, you know, take time to analyze the game. I, too, was watching the Score Esports videos. And even if this is, like, a very, very broad... Um, what am I explaining? So, if you... What do you call it? To re-explain, I participated in an interview about one of my Substack articles for the Score Esports, and they did a video on it, the video was released, and I'm reacting, explaining, kind of, giving my criticisms. There's a few parts later in the video where I'll have some words, for sure. So, you know, just talking about that. Where was I? What was I um, referring to? Derailed my train of thought. I'll, I'll pick well, it up as, I, as time goes on. Something so that you know when you're playing upper. Oh yeah, the... like this is a good. This can be just whether the content is like good or if it's missing points. It still it can act as an entryway into deeper level stuff. And for that, like despite everything, it's still gonna be good. Nuke when people for are some, the flashes you know? the roof. Because you can't do anything about people who don't want to delve deeper. You're going to look out for whether or not you can actually hear the flash. But if you haven't noticed, those strengths aren't exactly helping flashes remain relevant in these early days of CS2. Data compiled by Backpack, backpack Brain. brain. <laughs> uh, at least it didn't say like Backpack Brian or Back Pain or something like that. Although I will say, I will say it's lowercase b, it is not uppercase b. Backpack Brain lowercase one word. Remember the name, okay? Guests that players are throwing fewer flashes than ever before. So we asked him about it. Yeah, so I'm Backpack Brain. I describe myself True. as a, well, first and foremost, content creator, writer, and currently with a focus on CS2, for the pro scene, especially with my writing. As for outside of that, you know, I'm studying and that gives me enough spare time to focus on that kind of fashion project. But let me see, let me just compare this just, just as an exercise, let me see, where did I answer this in my actual oh, interview? They particularly like brain, I described. Here it is. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, so I'm Backpack Brain, I described myself This is the raw a, audio file. First and foremost, content creator, writer, and currently with a focus on CS2, the pro scene, especially with my writing, I think that's where most of my articles find their most impact. Yeah, obviously they cut out. I don't mind they cut out some of my waffling. You know, it's no. it's not gonna it's not gonna all be relevant. Some of the waffling, of course, was cut out not just because it was waffling, but because it's an editorial decision. Some of it, you know, I'm not surprised. Not CS2 related. I do a bunch of other YouTube stuff, but I'd say my primary passion projects are definitely Counter Strike related, CS:GO, and then coming into CS2 right now. And as for outside of that, I'd say I'm like a, in studying or training or, you know, whatever you want to call. I'm, I'm, like, you know, I'm, not, that's not just for the interview. I, I, I keep it intentionally vague. I'm not going to give away my entire life story until, you know, I end up having to show myself properly. But that's NBD either way. Time job outside of this. But, you know, this whole thing was recorded, so I don't have a problem playing this entire thing. But it is 40 know, minutes mean, because I, the questions were asked, but the question part wasn't recorded, only my answers were recorded. So I, I need to remember what the questions were, but it was a month ago, so... Enough spare time to focus on that kind of fashion project. 
tank top again. Yeah. And the first part of my article, before I get into the meat of the flashbang topic, actually talks about... I mean, he asked, he asked questions that were, like, actually relevant to the article. I, I, I will give props to the, uh, to the writer slash interviewer, you know, whatever his official title ends up being is, that he actually, he, you know, he read the article, he was genuinely, like, fairly, you know, quite, I was passionate, I don't know if passionate is the right word, like, interested, definitely, about, like... You know, me, my article, you know, obviously some standard questions, some other stuff. Like, I think he asked me about, like, my favorite Counter-Strike moment. They didn't include it in the video, of course, because they, I think they ended up making stuff more vague. And I think, honestly, they gave me less of a platform. Perhaps this is conjecture, so this may not be true. But I think, A, because Mahone was involved in the video and he's going to be more of, he's going to, you know, be a known face. So you want to have less of the guy who, who has, A, no face and B, no presence beyond that yet, right? I'm not going to be in a desk unless someone invites me. I'm actually open to do broadcast work if it doesn't involve me traveling to Europe. <laughs> if someone in Australia can schedule something that I can attend, then I honestly wouldn't even mind doing it for a low price to boost the scene forward, you know. We need to go back to that kind of time period. Anyway. But, and B, I definitely answered questions in a way that was a bit more me-centric. And they probably would have liked it if I kind of gave, if I gave them more to work with in terms of appealing to general audiences, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to answer questions in a fairly honest way. But anyway. All of this started when Backpack Brain noticed something really weird about Team Vitality. See, and it's very weird to see someone who didn't interview me or like this I don't I don't think is I want to say like I'm going to put my foot down here. I don't think it's like authentic. Right? I don't think it's authentic to have the person hosting a video where someone has c conducted an interview with another person. And then the person who's hosting the video and essentially acting as the interviewer who asked the questions, but isn't actually the person who spoke, right? Like the guy who's talking here, he didn't actually talk to me. He doesn't know what I said. He doesn't, he may have heard the interview, but he wasn't like there, right? And so I understand like there's constraints, obviously that multiple people have different jobs, different things here and there. I just, I, it just, for me, it just doesn't feel as authentic because he doesn't, he wasn't there interviewing me. So when he's like, oh, when Backpack Brain, you know, he noticed something. And I'm like, you know, you, you, you weren't there, brother. But you know what? Let's just let it play on. Vitality recently changed their Yes, basically. I mean, it's a vibe based thing, right? And it's especially, it may not matter so much to the average viewer at all. And maybe even to people who are interested, it may be harder to understand, right? But... <laughs> the score scavenging brain cells from Victoria. I mean, listen, they had, they cut they cut out a lot of what I said, so I'm sure it was it was too too intelligent. Maybe it was just toot my own horn. <laughs> More euphemistic phrases, I'm sure. Let's continue. Departure of Magisk and addition of Mezzi. When asked Mezzi. about replacing him by Play.gg, Apex was clear that some players are just so unique that directly I mean, replacing them- I this is, them this is the, this is, like, this talks about the side of my article, you know. Here in the world, yeah. That's what our boy Backpack Brain- Our boy, see, look, it's just, it's just a little bit, like, it robs me the wrong way for this guy to be like, our boy Backpack Brain. I'm not your boy. Okay, let's- I did an interview with not even you, but a different guy. If he said it, I'll be like, you know what? He reached out. He did. He spent like 40 minutes interviewing me, asking me different questions. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? You know, you're not, you're, I'm not your boy. You're not my boy. Okay. We ain't like that. So don't put words in like, it's like, you know, if you meet someone at a party and he knows someone who knows you. So he knows your name and he puts his arm around you and he's like, Yo, this my boy, and I'm like, we ain't like that, okay? I'm not gonna succumb to the peer pressure in the party of getting my arm put around and being like, yeah, you know, sucking up to the big guy. And listen, I, I said this in a tweet earlier, I, I'm gonna, you know, keep it a buck fifty or whatever, that if this, if this ends up being like, you know, 
oh, you, you should be grateful for the opportunity. No, the fuck. Like, I'm grateful. I don't need to suck up for the opportunity a second time. Like, this isn't my... What do you call it? I don't need this for me. I do what I do for me, if that makes sense. So, you know, if this means that I'm never in like a mainstream YouTube publication again, if the only place I can find my true publications is my own YouTube channels, I've started sex and Twitters and whatever. So be it. That's where you'll find me, right? I don't need to play the game of, you know, sidling up to people. I would rather be authentic, at least on some capacity, right? Because this isn't my, this is the quote unquote a side hustle. It's a passion project, like I said in the video. So, you know what? Figure out. I looked at the aggression statistics. I said, okay, let's put this data in a graph. And I noticed the flashbang usage, usage. really <laughs> differed from game to game, where the blast tournaments, two of them, they had kind of similar numbers between them, but the CSGO tournament was significantly different. And that kind of got me thinking, that's a much more interesting topic. And really there's a lot more numbers to be looked at across all other teams, across the entirety of both games of this year. And that's what kind of spurred this idea on. So refocusing sure. this article and taking it is funny to see my own article in like a 3D rotating graphic. That is, that is at least uh, entertaining because I can't be bothered to do that for my own video. So you know what? If I, if, can, if I can stats from HLT, take anything away from this. Compared flashbang stats using top 20 land results from both CS2 and the end of CSGO. And he found that, yeah, on average, fewer flashbangs were being thrown by both T. Now. Now. He said fewer flashbangs were being thrown. I said, listen, the flat was, they at least got the graph stat right. It's flashbangs thrown per round. Per round, right? Not, not just fewer flashbangs. If it was only fewer flashbangs, then you could easily attribute that to there being less rounds and thus less flashbangs. And there's a comment, which I'm sure if we after the whole reaction, we can get into shitting on the YouTube comments as we, you know, personal hobby. And... We can we can talk about a little bit of you know not doing your and see like okay let's let's let me say my piece a little bit here before we get into it. If you have the time to type a YouTube comment about a thought that you have, but you don't have the time to actually read, like you watch this fifteen minute YouTube video, maybe you skip you skip through it and you watched it at two times, so you watched six minutes of a fifteen minute YouTube video and you didn't read the source material and you didn't put the extra effort into actually verify that what you were talking about was at least half true right and then you make an inane youtube comment i get it like you don't have any responsibility for what you put on on the internet because you're a nobody and i'm a nobody but at least i put some thought into what i say online at least a little bit of thought and if i get it wrong then at least i'll be like you know what my bad i didn't put that thought into it i'm not gonna double down on what i what's incorrect but you know what youtube commenters you're playing your own game you've got no accountability you've got no reason to be correct anyway with a slightly larger drop on the T side. That was still true if you looked at all events and not just LAN. Now, you might be thinking, wait a second, the flashbang itself didn't change in CS2. Right? right? It still costs $200. It still yeah, yeah, yeah. of course it does. On a pixel marge, okay, anyway. <laughs> you have to keep on a pixel and simple clips uh, interspersed. Um... Maybe the problem isn't just, just, just to keep people engaged. It's the flashbang fine. itself, but it's place no in this new game. Counter Strike at the pro level can be like this intricate. <laughs> well, uh, no, wait, 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 intricate puzzle, but play wait, 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 can wait, be wait, like wait, this no, intricate. No. What the so maybe the problem isn't the flashbang itself. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's oh, place in this new game. Counter. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make the, right, I can't make the, the joke. I don't have the dedication. Script lately. We've got the introduction of MR12 and I don't know what who just a random Reddit post. Courtesy of R slash global offensive random random Reddit post. Dimitri himself would have interviewed you. Uh, listen, I, I wouldn't even have like at least if the person who's interviewing me is the person speaking, then there's at least a, some layer level of authenticity there, right? There's like a layer not added on top so like you know what like All that's fine I, I plus i don't think it works in a written article i don't think you can like tiktokify a written article in the written format i would have to like ab abstract it to the um 
I would have to TikTokify my article by like explaining it in 30 seconds and then interspersing clips in it. I'm sure I'm sure I could do it, by the way, if I was so inclined. I could be like, like, start cut, 30 seconds. Flashbangs in CS2 are dying, and here's why. In CSGO, people threw a lot of flashbangs because they knew how to use it over the years of perfecting the game on a simple clip of getting flashed and dying. But nowadays, even though the flashbang is not changed at all, own a pixel clip of flashbang blinding perfectly. People still aren't using flashbangs as well. Graph interspersed. This is because it takes a lot of time to build up the utility usage over time and so teams don't have it yet. Over time though, I'm sure people will start using flashbangs again as better teams start constructing better metas. An end clip. Like, I could, I'm sure I could TikTokify it. But like, that, I'm, just, I'm just not bothered economic mm -hmm. consequences of that, which are not necessarily set in stone, but are definitely still being digested even in 2024. Like, okay, I didn't even, like, they, they, they why, why is this random Reddit post with, how many upvotes does this, this has a 118 upvote Reddit post with 90 comments is somehow valid enough to get its own rotating 3D, 2.5D screenshot on this video, but whatever, still being I guess that, that qualifies. So there's already maybe one reason, right? Fair Players enough. are so strapped for cash that they're thinking flashbangs. Did you read that post? Economy, I'm not. Listen, maybe we'll delve. Listen, we got time. I'll maybe I may delve into it later. Pro scene itself is undergoing a period of instability as rosters settle and competition resumes. What is this? What is this? <laughs> And I didn't watch the team liquid. Oh, it's, it's that team building exercise. Out, isn't it reasonable to think uh. that newly assembled teams outside their comfort zones may Tyloo tier one team? On how old is this clip? How how damn long? How what is this? What is this roster? Oh, it's not even that old. Damn, tyloo has gone through so many damn rosters. I don't even remember, man. Then Jesus Christ. The op itself, which, as we recently discussed, has fallen out of favor a bit. Oh my oh. god, oh, he's not good. Remember good analysis from the world's best IGL, Nico. Remember, flashes are a must against oppers. And if the op itself is... I don't wanna, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna... You know, ad hominem personal attack. I just, I just... Everything about the score esports is just so Reddit. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Is that true? I was not even. Oh my god! Is, is this a C? Is that not? Is this a CS2 clip or a CSGO clip? I can't tell. <laughs> is it? No, it is. This is CS2. This is CS2 because it's got the test build. So this is a CS2 god. clip. Yeah. Listen. This is not good. Remember, they at least did that right. Listen. <laughs> it's just so Reddit. Listen, when you, if you if you haven't watched this video yet, when we get into the other guy who's hosting this, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna say anything. You can you can do the talking in the chat. I'll let I'll let you talk talk about it. Okay. Then flashes aren't either. There's also the new dynamic smoke and the impact of the HE grenade. Since the HE can now clear smoke grenades, it received so added true. functionality that competes with flashbangs for your limited dollars. In theory, so true. It's possible Shout out Tea Time. Shout out Tea Time. Always gotta, always gotta give shout out to the, um, you know, fellow South Asian slash Asian in general talent. It's a hard and difficult grind. There's barriers in every direction, and yet, and yet, people still persevere. You know, Some have to give shout out. Not many people give the more attention than before. Something that was pointed out by CS. Hope, hope he gets to work more events, but it's a, it's a difficult time. You know, that is. It's sort of hard to know where to start. So let's throw things over to Colton and hopefully get a little more concrete. And now the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Uh, uh, you, I do want pizza to be fair. So what is this? You get the Australian ads. Here we go. I'm not, I'm not letting the uh, audio play. For once, for once you get, you get to, you get to, what the hell? Bro, don't, am I going to get banned for this? <laughs> What are these ads, bro? This isn't, listen, usually you'd be like, oh my god, you're, but this is like the OBS browser window, so this is no cookies, no nothing. This is what YouTube shows you if you have no cookies, I mean, I guess. Okay. You're I'm not gonna say anything.
not really gonna lie. I'm, not, I'm actually not gonna say anything at all, actually, to be honest. Apart, apart from the mustache, I have no problem with anything. Because <laughs> I, 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 I'm ba if you, if you had me here, I'm basically this guy. So I, I listen. Do not levy criticism against those who represent yourself. If, if you like, I literally. Like this is Ina. This is Amatsuka Uto. I was I she this, I'm pretty sure this is her one of her comeback streams. Okay, like I recognize the obscure VTuber stream in the background, and that's Germa. That's a Halo Championship. I'm, I don't play Halo. This is what Corona. This is Melkroth has a the backpack. Welcome, welcome. The mustache is the only thing that ruins the entire image. Okay, that's all I have to say people with that transition when you know I'm about to talk about Counter-Strike. I mean, who knows? At some point, maybe we'll have done. But also, why is the, why does the video, no disrespect, why is the video editor, not that he, he probably knows as much as the actual host does anyway, but why, why yeah, is the video yes, editor yeah. got the transition about the only guy who knows what he's talking about? Right? Like... And episodes have cracked that it might be true, but... It makes no sense. I mean, is it like a comedy? I'm the one comedy editing this video. thing. I don't know. Is one this of a the bit that makes Counter Strike so unique? Is its economy. In any given round, your team has a decision to make about. I mean, you can't get more mainstream than having to explain that Counter Strike has an economy in a video. Like, it's such a. <laughs> well, it's not even that they flame me. It's that he is like this guy. Obviously, is not like. You, you don't need to call me an expert. I, I know some of what I, I know, like in my art, I'm an expert on my article because I wrote it. That's obvious. Mahone is a, the actual expert in the video. At least Mah Mahone has done broadcast work, has done deep dives, has spent ages in like the pits of Counter-Strike analysis. If anyone deserves to be the expert, they should have given him that transition. But they transitioned to a random YouTube editor guy who I'm sure has at least play or something, know something, but like, I mean, Pat, whatever, right? Those decisions can mean massive swings in the game. And sure, a flashbang is only $200, and that didn't change with CS2, but plenty of other stuff did. In CS2, there are now only 12 rounds per half, a fact that has made true. players again reevaluate so the true. the op. It means that each half is 20% shorter than before, so you have less time to earn and buy guns. With fewer gun rounds, okay, listen, guns, let's... losing guns to the other team is even more significant. Really, that is an actual balance change. That's changed how the economy... I mean, they. I think they cut off half of what I said here. I'm gonna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find the actual... It's just like the intern style to keep me AG users, enemies. It kind of wasn't some of that stuff was kind of just red herring. Some stuff didn't really, you know, bear any fruit worth talking about. And I also, for a brief moment, I was worried that this was just like a niche thing and that it wasn't necessary. We've rebuilt. Let's figure it out. We're not going to insist that. Yeah, what is worrying is GL over to end. But also, that the end of the talk about you want, of course. On my brand flag, it's was just I would see in the Australian. I, I don't know where or what I said is in this anecdotes that and you said they all put nerfed, and then even like the greatest players in the world, like Simple's famous tweet, like, Oh, I might come back as a rifler. When the greatest player in the world says, I don't know if the AWP is the weapon for me anymore, people are going to take that word and basically run with it, even though there's not actually like necessarily a basis to it but also on some level can you argue with the best player in the world saying the weapon's nerfed even if you believe it's not like there's a lot of complexity to it as you can see i gave it i gave nuanced and informed opinions but you know what too deep for the the scory split video actually to be fair if you included this in the video people i will just i'm gonna thank them for this why because if they if i if they included this part I'm sure some someone somehow would have given me some like strongly worded DM or tweet about how I don't know more than simple. I'm sure. So if they actually by removing this from the video, they may have saved me. You know, a stitch in time saves nine s s incredibly dangerous DMs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Discussion, right? Want to be holding the long angles that leading for a situation. I have a hundred percent guarantee on this, but it seems to check out as the flash or draw. It is it's slightly different, right? And I want to frame it as different, not worse or better, because with the MR12, how you'd want to purchase, which is probably the more important change because 
Okay, here's where I, here's where the actual that really that is an actual balance change. That's yes, changed. this is okay. So this is this is where I, I I found it. I found it. Okay, here we go. The economy works the way that the orb. So we have to get used to it. General, like it didn't get balance change. And okay, can I can I start so, from where I started? So generally, by the orb, you know, and execute. You know, traditionally discussion, right? Sorry for jumping around so much. I gotta find the. the usage has gone down. The flashbangs that I used are going to be more frequently used by the OPA because if a this part was included, but it was segmented later. The riflets who are going to be aggressively peeking anyway may as well either not buy a flashbang or drop a flashbang so that the OPA can. Can I two X speed myself and waffling here? To buy just the utility limit, and basically I'm suggesting partially that the existing flashbangs in a team have been redistributed a little bit towards the OPA as the riflers want to take more peaks. And also that the orpers are getting less flashbangs overall. That's why they're resistant, I think, is because... The, I think the question was, why why are orpers more resistant to the flashbang change? It is actual, like, interesting questions, but of course, I mean... Other rifles you can't, have, mo like, you can't have the bulk of it in there for some reason. And if we're talking about the next part, which is the orp in general, like, it didn't get balance changes, but... Here we go. It was nerfed or whatever, right? Talking about whether the orb is nerfed. That kind of feeling. I think partially it is that the mechanics of the game are slightly different. I don't think anyone would 100% disagree. Let me know if the audio needs to be tweaked. The mechanics by of the game, the peaking, the movement, everything is slightly different, right? And I want to frame it as different, not worse or better, because we're for better or for worse. Listen, if it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this. This is my this is my uh, cross to bear. This is my like flaming torch. If Maui gets his cultural impact, my my catchphrase or word is going to be nuance, okay? Because the entire goddamn scene has no space for nuance. And if, if I have to be the, like, flag bearer of nuance, so be it. Like, I'm here, I'm here saying, AWP is not necessarily better or worse. My accent is fucked here. It's just different. That's how I'm framing it because you know we have to we have to see what it, how it bears out. We don't know yet. There's a lot of variables, a lot of things that need to be changed. We don't have concrete information about everything. Like, but you know, people don't want these. New, people don't want nuance. People don't want nuance. They wanna show up, be told what to think, and then get angry or be happy. Just A, B, C, get out. They don't want nuance because nuance means you have to think. And you have to actually have your own thought process of is, you know, is, is the all better or worse? I need to come up with my own opinion. I need to not only have that opinion, but accept that the opinion isn't 100% that there's, you know, blobs and splotches and areas where that opinion isn't necessarily going to be correct or that it can be disproven, so on and so forth. But you know what? People don't want it. We're moving into CS2 for good now, and so we have to get used to it, right? And with the AWP, I think initially people were just uncomfortable with the way that the AWP was, and in addition to that, it was... Now, to, now to be fair, there were some animation changes which did uh, impact things. With so, the MR12, which is everyone. probably the more important change, because that really... That okay, this is, this is where the, uh, the clip here begins, right? Economy works. So let's, let's see, let's see... How it that's is. changed how the economy works. That's changed how you'd want to purchase an AWP. You don't want to save it as much, maybe. You'd rather buy more rifles for more buy rounds. And so when you combine those changes, like the intangible feeling with the tangible like economic damage you can do by buying an AWP and not having the impact, like if you're uncomfortable with buying an AWP and you've lost your team this huge chunk of money, why not just stop buying the AWP and start rifling instead? And so I think that's... It's all kind of part and parcel of this change in CS2. Now let's 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 see let's you know little A/B testing. Let's see how we'll see how much they kept in there. Even more significant. Really, that is an actual balance change. That's now they cut off the beginning part, which was kind of interesting stuff. You know, I'm sure people could have benefited from it, but you know, short video. You got to keep the retention, I guess. Changed how the economy works. That's changed how you'd want to purchase an orb. You don't want to save it as much, maybe. You'd rather buy more rifles for more buy rounds. But hold on a second. Why and then they, you know, come up there. Why are we talking about the op? Well, in Counter Strike, the opper has also traditionally thrown a lot of flashbangs. If it backfires and you can't get it up and running, it's, it's so hard. Guys, if you didn't know, guys, if you didn't know, Fallen is an OPA, guys. This is very, this is new tech, generational information. Fallen is an OPA. 
will take them both down. Flash? Yeah, okay, I don't know about Torji. Torji may be an ult, though. That one's up in the air. Who are the flash, Dory? Flash? One balcony or flash? I want to think about it. <laughs> okay, well. But that I think of more flashes from teams rather than players. A lot of the time it's just offers that throw flashes, at least in the more recent CSGO meta, because they're always in the back and it's hard to entry and stuff like that. That's what they I said. They are typically in a good position to do so, especially since they can flash others out of an angle that they then hold themselves. As Backpack Brain's analysis showed us, the reduction in CS2 flashbang usage was noticeably less dramatic for offers. And while it's hard to know exactly why, Yam clip Renegades versus Tainted Minds in 2024. Well, listen, uh, uh, Australian representation, I guess. It's clear that they remain one of the primary sources of flash what a clip. tossed for most teams. Let's enjoy it. And so you don't I, even let the clip finish, man. I want to see the clutch. What I suspect is going on with this change, and I don't have a 100% guarantee on this, but it seems to check out, is that while generally flashbang usage has gone down, usage. the flashbangs that I used are going to be more frequently used by the OPA. Like I said, that the they reordered a little bit, but for CSGO I mean, allowed players that's not a big deal specifically. Drop grenades. So, oppers may throw flashbangs Bangs purchased and dropped by others, and could in a given round throw more than the two flashbangs you're normally allowed to carry. Also, it means you can try to do this. Austin clip. He died! He died! I, I do. I welcome an Austin clip. To be fair. Now, generally speaking, counter terrorists have been struggling more with the economic impact of MR12. When you look at the team breakdown, both are throwing fewer flashes, but usage actually drops off even more for the terrorist team. Despite that, terrorists aren't faring much worse in opening duels. Actually, in this data set, they're doing slightly better. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have meaningfully mentioned that. It is irrelevant. There's just, the deviation here is. Like, is <laughs> you can see the graph, man. Mm -hmm. It's this. I wouldn't. This, at least, at least, they, at least they included an actual screenshot quote from our article. You know, that's those are my words. So you can't, you can't take that out of context. I said it. Part of this phenomenon is terror choosing to take more peaks without flashes. So that's everything you need to know about these graphs. Again, big props to Backpack Brain for bringing this to the fore and for speaking with us. At least they gave me note, big props. The studio is looking pretty slick. You think maybe sometime I could come in and record? Hey, wait, don't trip. And that was- Maybe he's an own character. I don't know the dynamic of this Corey Sports. So that's not, the hard at least, you know what? Credit where credit is due. He, he's at least given a little bit, he's been a fairly Decent reading of what I said in general. He's, he hasn't done. He hasn't done me wrong yet. So you know what? Fair. Hard data. But what does all this mean for the future of the flashbang and for your matches in particular? Well, in terms of pro play, with rosters breaking up and rosters CS2's release, including plenty of IGLs on the move, there's going to be less overall. Am I going to queue later? Um, maybe. But it is already eight, like eight thirty-ish. I may, I may just do like. Some word or stuff or whatever, like web games and chill. Could that also mean fewer flashes? Let's see what Speaking I think. of coordination, we've also recently seen an increase in international lineups. Liquid added Cadian as their opping IGL and brought back Twists. We've got Glaive in charge of a Polish end. So Twists is very anti-social social club. New Falcons mm -hmm. roster. Could these changes yeah. in language mean a longer time to adapt? I think that's gonna also hinder... See, look here, like, this was kind of what I meant with the, like, it sounds like he's asking me a question and then I'm answering it, but he didn't ask me the question, obviously. Even if the question may have been asked by the interviewer and then he's got, like, the transcripts or whatever, right? Like, it just, it portrays something, it portrays something that just, it just feels to me wrong, but... You know, he, 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 people don't care about it because you weren't you weren't there, I guess. I don't so. think it's gonna prevent it, but I think it's gonna make it take a lot longer than if you had like every roster speaking their native language. Then you'd be able to get up to speed on the small stuff like team synergy much quicker, and then you'd already be able to talk about utility and improving the overall level of the game. So that's one aspect which I didn't talk about because you can't analyze that, but I think it's important to discuss it. And while the flash itself didn't receive any direct changes, two other nades did. The HE and the smoke. Now, smoke clouds can be popped from distance, offering players a shiny. Honestly, it's sort of difficult to gauge. Clearing smokes with HE grenades. Shroud, is, bat. Is it that common right can we get a bat chest for shroud? But it is something that we could see more <laughs> of as things are figured out and rosters become more cohesive. Uh, I have. You want to get close? Yeah, Nate. 
forest clip from like actual beta. Like, I mean, it was a good clip, I guess. What do I have to say about it? If I were to speculate a little bit, I feel that in the future, HE grenades are going to be used more for anti-stratting. Like, let's just say you know that a team always throws this particular smoke. Beforehand, you're going to say, you know what, we're going to make sure to always God, disagree with Mahone. We'll open that smoke and I think it's true. It. it really depends on what the other well, team does. It's, I just, feel it's like... just kind of like, a, I mean, not to talk over Mahone, but I'm talking about everybody anyway. There is like the pop flash versus like specific execute flashes and like lineups and stuff like that. Like we still, we still, we still kind of, no, we don't have the full optimization of all of this, right? Like if, if a team throws a specific side execute and you know that they're throwing it, you can rethrow their nades in a prac server, line up, find lineups for HE so break their execute on timing. And if you know they're pathing on a site, then you know who to peek when and where, and you can like the, the, this kind of stuff can only happen once time takes. So I think that's where it should be heading. Cause I think over time or rather right now it feels kind of like if you're just going to bind he just to wait for that particular opportunity to come up it may not come up as for you at home this doesn't mean that you should suddenly stop buying flashes when your team needs them learn your lineups seriously but it does mean that you should be considering the impact of buying a flash over a more versatile tool especially in the face of weaker opping that said part of backpack brains data suggests that uncoordinated rosters do get a little bit less value out of a flashbang now i don't know where he got this i don't know where uh, like to, to, to really listen to this because this this I really confused me opping. that said part of backpack brains data suggests that uncoordinated rosters do get a little bit less value out of a flashbang uh i, I mean i don't know I, I don't know like did i say this because <laughs> uh, i don't think i did well like let me just let, let, me, let me open up my own damn article and check right I'm pretty sure, yes, uh, from what I said was that I said that flashbang usage, I can't, whenever I say flashbang, the word usage, uh, well, let, let, yeah, let's let it play out. And let's be honest, your face at pugs, probably not that coordinated. So if you're stuck choosing, maybe just buy a smoke instead. After all, in pro play, the lower levels of flashes and ops could make the game a little scrappier and more about gunplay, which could bring these two vastly different levels of play a teeny tiny bit closer to each other. And hey, if the economy's- Nah, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't explain it further. But to speak on it specifically, I think what he's talking about is when I say what happens next in my article here, I talk about how I suspect that once rosters are more stable, because that's the only time I ever used the word to stable rosters, right? When I said that once people get more comfortable and rosters are more stable, flashbang usage should stabilize. But, like, I didn't, I didn't say necessarily, like, more coordinated rosters or less co like, I mean, maybe that's true as a general state, but I didn't say it. Like in the way that he says it, so I don't this know. It's just a minor thing, but I'm, I listen. Future, like it's possible we could see. But that that's what happens when he doesn't. He's not the one interviewing me. He's just kind of secondhand hosting it or reading someone else's script for our work. Like you lose, you lose like the layer of direct side flash bang really. usage rebound, but not the CT side or not as much. I think it's gonna be near the end of this year. Maybe the second major you start to see this. Maybe I said it here, but level out compared to what they used to be, and then coming twenty twenty five, you're gonna really see the renaissance of utility innovation. I think this year we're just gonna build the teams, and we're gonna get CS two like figured out. So are flashes suddenly on the way out? Well, no, obviously not. But for the foreseeable future, we could see them become a little less overly relied on than before. And hey, flashes could return to dominance one day. But until then, we'll always have the memories. Hey, well, that's the that's the video. Did you include pistol rounds of the flash thrown per round statistics? I do not separate rounds from each other. All rounds are in there. Now. Less flashes on pistol rounds? I don't think, th I mean, there are, obviously, but like... I mean, technically that's true, like, as an overarching, like, your overarching point is correct, that there are... I mean, 
I don't think less flashes on pistol rounds on in CS2 is necessarily tr true. I would have to check it. It it could be true, but like I don't think it's meaningful, meaningfully different. At least flash pistol to pistol. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I still see like at least from what I've seen, it hasn't been that much of a difference. I was doing a flashbang uh, pistol round article, but. I postponed it and then CS2 switch came about and all my data became like less relevant. But if I did start recollecting that data, then I could compare it to the data already collected. That's possible, right? More pistol rounds per match. This the this pistol rounds per match is the same. There's more pistol rounds as a percentage of total rounds. That's true because there's less total rounds, right? In a half, there's now 12 instead of 15. 14 rounds versus 11 rounds. Yes. But that that's like you're separating, you're splitting like hairs from hairs from hairs. Like at that point, the da the measure of data that would make a difference is so little that it's impossible to like talk about it. Like I could do it and I could put the graph up there, but then the nuance point is so small that it's like, what am I talking about at the end of the day? That's at least what I believe. Like you could, you, if you really want to get in the weeds of it, you could. I didn't feel like it was valuable to go through it in that order. You could talk about talking about pistol rounds is I think talking. You need to talk about something in a more specific manner than just necessarily like comparing it in that way. But you know what? Fair enough. They did. They did at least pin my my comments. So we'll take we'll take what we can get from that. Although I don't know what the people you 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 you're like oh this guy did a CS stuff. I wanna I wonder what he's you know talking about. And then it's just completely like unrelated stuff. If I click it on oh that's my first CS two eight. So it's just a bunch of super auto pets and web games content. Although this video got a lot of views. I think it hit the it hit the algorithm for IEM Cadavis twenty twenty four. Like people searching I and Katowitz ended up searching this and just end up like going up on views for some reason. But anyway, I'm almost at 100 subscribers. Let's go. Any increase is a good increase. I'll get back to the damn video. A Bro, I'm not watching the Portland jail. What is they do? They do regular f sports. I didn't even know that. Well, once every I'm not watching the uh, the ad to rewatch the video. We've been through the entire video, but in any case, that's the breadth, the majority of the quarter quarter reaction. Just do this here. So, final final thoughts before we start delving into the comments. I think that's a you know, we could we could do this all day with the comments here, but. <laughs> Vax sucks top comment. Yeah, I mean we'll we'll get into it, right? But final thoughts on the reaction before I split it into two videos, because I think that's reasonable to do. Overall, my experience with this whole endeavor. First of all, they reached out to me in a Twitter DM and Twitter, if you don't follow someone, their DM goes into the damn nether realm. You need to like click multiple things. And it doesn't even, there's no notification. It's just like, oh, you have a DM from someone who might not be a bot. And like half the time it's a bot and then half the time it's a real person. Yeah, it was through uh, Twitter. So it, it was literally messages pending requests. And then the, uh, the writer, the writer. So this guy, he reached out and then... We talked to Twitter and then I sent him, I sent him over to my disc, my discord, personal discord. Well, sorry, I have one. And then we just kind of talked from there. I was like, you better give me credit. He was like, yeah, I would, I wouldn't do without it. Of course, we didn't, I didn't get as much credit as I would have asked for if I had known, but he, you know, I was like, you got to include me as much as possible. He, he doesn't, you know, all he does is write the script, right? So in the script, they give me credit and on screen, I am there. They link my Substack. Honestly, Substack is probably better linked than Twitter. People like Twitter these days are cooked anyway, but you know, that it, it, it is what it is on some level. How do they find me? That would have been because of the, uh, 
the Reddit post, and I gotta thank is it Dan Roll. I don't know how to say it. The if I can find it, because he submitted it. Uh, let's. Put it in here. Mm, OBS. Oh, brother. There. This thing. This thing. So, one of the members of the Richard Lewis Discord is the, what do you call it, he decided to post my, one of my articles to Reddit. This one uh, was one of my, what do you call it, I think it was one of my better ones. I put some decent number crunching and it was a good concept to begin with, so it ended up doing pretty well. But then, from then it got like... A lot of views. Like you can go back and check. Uh, I think at the very end of the video I did, where I looked at the, the Reddit comments on this and basically shout on most of them, but just discussed. I talked about. Like, I think I got like two, almost two thousand views on my article just from that Reddit post alone. So it it well, it did actually dry, and I got a few subscriptions. Like it's all free subscriptions. I'm just doing this for myself. I'm not, you know, I don't do enough to warrant paid subscriptions yet. But that's how they. That's how he found me, at least. I don't think anyone else, like, this guy, the Richard Lewis follows him on Twitter. That, that's what I was like, you know what, it, it seems like it's legit enough. If, if Richard Lewis follows you on Twitter, I'm going to give you the time of day and, you know, entertain the conversation, right? And I mean, I generally understand how the scurry sports would work. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to get what I want necessarily, right? And... I'm still going to complain about the fact that I didn't get what I want, even if it's quote unquote fair that I didn't like the video, the title of the video, the thesis of the like topic was inspired by my article. I'm into, I might, they have screenshots and topics from my article. I did an interview, you know, I personally don't think it would be wrong to have me in the Title, have me in the thumbnail, and have me higher in the description with all of my links. I think if I was doing some sort of collaboration where somebody else was a significant part of like the thesis and topic of the video, I would include them more than they do here. This I'm, I'm a person, this is a, on some level, a corporate like entity. They have like meeting to decide all this shit, right? They're, Candering, candering, catering and pandering to the algorithm. And so you're going to end up with less of the, you know, personal touch that I would have put onto this, you know? Then again, I got the exact same credit as Mahone. <laughs> so, you know what? Maybe me and Mahone are on the same level now. Maybe that's how, listen, at, le at the very least, they don't treat us any different, right? It's good to know that even if you're maybe one of the more famous, more known, um, What's it called? Like analyst content creators on the platform. You get the same amount of credit for an interview that you give as I do. So you know what? <laughs> At least they're equally um, consistent in that manner, right? I, I think it would, regardless, it would be it's a good um, for me not having necessarily any like major platform of my own beyond like the small circle of like my my discord which is honestly like three or four active members and a few random people who don't really talk at all and then you know some other small communities that i'm you know participating actively and then my twitter which some other people know me from and then my youtube which is a whole separate thing which i just put my own stuff on it's like, it's all kind of sub like 100, 200 people, right? And they might be passionate and active, but it's still a small community. And I think the chance to broaden that viewership at the expense maybe of not having as much critical control and as much of a close eye on the content. I think for a one-off to get that kind of opportunity is 
fine by me, right? Because probably either they don't, like, if I say no to an interview like this, either they make it anyway and they just don't include an interview about me, it just Mahone talks more and then they just give me credit as like a random guy, like the Reddit post, or they just don't do the video at all. And I, in both of those situations, I lose, right? So I may as well extract what I can, like the proverbial content leech. You know, now I'm reacting to it, so I'm, you know, I'm a content thief on multiple levels at this point. Sue me. Don't sue me. Um, or maybe do sue me, you know? You won't get away with it. <laughs> to say the least, right? I have no... The, the guy who wrote it and did the interview with me, I have no, like... Bad words to say at all his way. I don't have bad words anyway. Like, I have harsh words, if anything, right? But at the interviewer, you know, he communicated, he was respectful, he asked more questions, he asked way more questions than were included, right? Like, I think I... Hold on, if I can find it here. If you will review and prefer me, did not say or say something in the world, I'll be a happy man. At that point, of course, I had no idea Australia's with this crazy legacy until now. Basically, like he asked me, like now memorable Counter Strike team. moment. That's basically been to other important part of my CS:GO moments was, I think, the Stockholm Major with Richard Lewis and Thorin. Those guys were very, very impactful because they have a lot of like long form videos, and nowadays it's hard to get long form content out. It's hard to get art people to read articles these days. And that was kind of like, if you create something truly worthwhile, then people will still pay attention to it. And I want to give a shout out to them as well. Now, of course, that wouldn't make it into the final video. Not only, <laughs> listen, for two reasons, obviously, right? But they didn't include my first answer either. So I think the original, the, the, so to give... Just to round that off, I think originally they would have included a bit more of me, but then it took a bit longer and then Maho they had the chance to include Mahone in it and then Mahone is obviously, you know, a bigger face and he's actually got a face, which I don't yet. But yeah, I think overall, the video, it was fine. They could have made it better. They could have been more detailed. They do have to balance out with, you know, pandering to the masses for their actual business, essentially, right? And they, they, they you know, my app was up there, my, my profile picture is up there. Overall, I'm happy that I did it. Would I do it again? Maybe, maybe not. Would they have me on again? I don't know, it's up to them, right? But I'm not gonna mince my words and pretend that I'm... 100% grateful and oh thank you big YouTube you know entity with 2 million subscribers for featuring little backpack brain who has less than 100 subscribers thank you for featuring me like you know this is not my you know everything and my I don't derive the my sense of purpose from sucking up to these guys necessarily you know I'm gonna be fair to it and if, if they if they include me a second time I'm definitely gonna demand more that's i think the bottom line if there is this is the basic standard that they're gonna do it for me then it's not gonna happen again There's, okay let me just double check um so this video came out how long ago i would need to check specific to my time zone let me just youtube when did when did this video come out it came out like I think eight or nine, eight or nine hours ago. I'm, I'm gonna say eight hours ago, right? I'm gonna say eight hours ago. Let me check my Substack stats to see to see how much traction this actually gave to me. Because I didn't release an article recently, so any traction would be from the link, right? It will be from people clicking it from there and coming to it. So let me just go to my. My dashboard, go to my, go to my stats. I don't know what damn time zone they're in. So I've got about, about, um, what do I, I keep, I've got too many damn tabs open. Bro, bros using all the emotes possible. Banned for spamming, banned. Um, anyway, what I was going to say is, okay, just take this one down. 
scroll that here essentially and i got about 90 90 views on articles from my from my link being here essentially i'm gonna say 90 right this thing is 50,000 views now quick quick math on that is like I think one in fifty on one in five hundred people maybe clicked on the link. It's like point two percent. It's uh better than nothing. It's not like a universal boost i got i got a few youtube subscribers i got a few twitter followers you know here and there but you know i think that i think that's that's a fair round off if you if you've come if you've come here from you know watching the the score esports video if this is your first four into competitive counter strike analysis and you know so on and so forth i can't promise so many videos on my youtube channel but i can you know, my Twitter is probably going to be the place where you'd find most CS related content and then my sub stack as well. Both of those should be linked in the description if I've done my due diligence and, you know, be sure to subscribe and follow and all that. Enjoy the content as it comes out and, you know, keep an open and critical mind about yourself. All right. If you if you're critical about the content that you watch and you think about it while you're watching it. Even if you watch a video from the score esports or from anyone, you will derive the correct kind of value from it if you've got the good process. Process is the important part. Nuance. That's my keyword. He subbed. Pog, he subbed. He subbed. I'm gonna be with a slash marker and then Yeah. End of reacts.